The story of Twin Peaks begins in 1989. In the titular Twin Peaks, Washington, the body of high school student Laura Palmer is found, murdered by a mystery attacker. When Laura's classmate Ronette Pulaski is found beaten and comatose, the town's sheriff's department, led by Sheriff Harry S. Truman, realizes that they are out of their depth and the FBI is sent in to help. FBI agent Dale Cooper arrives, and after discovering a small piece of paper with the letter R printed on it underneath Laura's finger, Fingernail, he begins to suspect that Laura's death is connected to a similar case the FBI investigated a year prior. Back in 1988 in Deer Meadow, Washington, the body of teenager Teresa Banks was found in the river. The FBI's bureau chief, the hard of hearing Gordon Cole, tasked agents Chester Desmond and Sam Stanley to investigate, labeling this a Blue Rose case. Back in the 1950s, the United States Air Force started Project Blue Book to investigate the existence of UFOs. After Project Blue Book's disbandment, the U.S. military and the FBI formed the secret Blue Rose Task Force to investigate cases of a paranormal nature. With this knowledge, Desmond and Stanley investigated Teresa murder, finding a small piece of paper with a printed T underneath her fingernails. Desmond then traveled solo to Teresa's last known location, a trailer park run by Carl Rod. Desmond learned that Teresa had worn a mysterious jade ring before her death that made her arm feel completely numb. After Desmond found the ring, he disappeared without a trace. The mysterious disappearance of Desmond coincided with the reappearance of Agent Philip Jeffries, a founding member of the Blue Rose Task Force that disappeared two years prior. Jeffries questioned who the young Agent Cooper really is, spouted seeming nonsense about a stranger named Judy, and then vanished into thin air. Now, back in Twin Peaks, the eccentric Cooper, who has an affinity for coffee, donuts, and pie, gets to know the town's residents as he builds his case. Working alongside Cooper and Sheriff Harry is Deputy Tommy Hawk Hill, who is in touch with his Native American roots and is an expert tracker, Deputy Andy Brennan, who is slow-witted and sensitive, and the object of Andy's eye, the Sheriff Department's receptionist Lucy Moran. Other Twin Peaks residents include Sarah Palmer, Laura's grieving mother who begins seeing horrific visions of a mysterious stranger. Leland Palmer is Laura's father, who falls into a spiral of grief due to his beloved daughter's death. This affects his working relationship as a lawyer with his business partner Ben Horn, the shady owner of the Great Northern Hotel, and secretly, a casino and brothel called One-Eyed Jacks that is located on the other side of the U.S.-Canada border. Ben has many expansion plans for his business, part of which involves seducing and killing Catherine Martin whose late brother Andrew Packard owned the town's lumber mill to take her land for himself. Catherine is powerful and duplicitous in her own right, scheming with Ben to take control of the mill from its current owner, Andrew's young widow, Josie. Catherine resents Josie for inheriting the mill and blames her for Andrew's death. Josie, meanwhile, is having a secret affair with Harry. Catherine is also stuck in a loveless marriage with the well-meaning lumberjack, Pete. And finally, there's the town mechanic, Big Ed Hurley, who is stuck in a loveless marriage of his own with the overbearing and superhumanly strong Nadine. Ed has only stayed with Nadine due to the guilt he feels over her losing an eye due to a hunting accident. Ed has long harbored a love for his high school sweetheart Norma Jennings, who owns the Double R Diner, but the two have never been able to pursue their feelings for each other. As Ed and Norma attempt to rekindle their high school romance in secret, Nadine's new business venture to create silent drape runners fails to secure a patent, leading Nadine to overdose on pills and fall into a coma. Complicating the high school sweetheart's rekindled love even more is the release of Norma's criminal husband Hank from prison, putting an official end to the would-be lover's secret tryst. Cooper and Harry's investigation into Laura's personal life reveals many secrets about her relationships with her fellow high school classmates. Laura's best friend was Donna Hayward, who kept secret Laura's descent into drugs and debauchery shortly before her death. Bobby Briggs was Laura's toxic boyfriend, a school bully who worked with his best friend Mike Wheeler to deal drugs for one-eyed Jack's bartender Jacques Renault and the violent trucker Leo Johnson. Secretly, Bobby was cheating on Laura with Leo Leo's young high school dropout wife Shelly, who is a waitress at the Double R. Despite his own philandering ways, Bobby becomes jealous and antagonistic toward classmate James Hurley, the nephew of Big Ed, when he discovers the loner was having an affair with Laura. When Shelly finds a bloody shirt amongst Leo's clothes, Bobby sees an opportunity to rid himself of his violent
violent boss, planting the shirt in the hopes of framing Leo for Laura's murder. And then there's Audrey Horn, the daughter of Ben, who tries to assert herself as more powerful and mature for her age, and instantly takes a liking to the investigating Agent Cooper. Breaking bad habits can be really difficult, but it's never been made simpler than with this video sponsor, Fume. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong, so instead of making drastic, uncomfortable changes, why not just take the bad out of the habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning, flavored air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious, all-natural flavors. So, you get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. It fills the void in a natural, guilt-free way. Each fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing while breaking your habit. There's also a variety of different flavors to choose from, and my personal favorite is orange vanilla. I genuinely wasn't sure what to expect before trying fume for the first time, but the flavor is actually really great and fresh, and I feel pretty cool while using it. Stopping is something we all put off doing because it's hard, but fume makes it easy, enjoyable, and fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, so why can't one of them be you? So join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup with destructive habits by picking up your journey pack today. Head on over to tryfume.com slash recap and chill or scan that QR code in the corner and use code recap and chill to get 10% off your journey pack today. That's tryfum.com promo code recap and chill to get 10% off your order today. Thank Thanks so much to Fume for sponsoring this video, now let's get back to the recap. During the investigation, the murder site is determined to be an abandoned railway car, where the phrase fire walk with me is found written in blood. The dour and sardonic FBI forensic specialist Albert Rosenfield performs an autopsy on Laura and finds extensive bird bites on her body and a poker chip with the letter J in her stomach. As Albert prefers a more methodical approach to the murder investigation, Cooper's investigation tactics prove to be more cerebral and unorthodox. Cooper uses a Tibetan an investigative technique he learned about in a dream to narrow his focus on the drug dealer Leo Johnson and Laura's eccentric psychiatrist Dr. Jacoby. Although at first skeptical of Cooper's methods, Harry allows the agent to act on his flights of fancy, acknowledging that the forest surrounding Twin Peaks has been known to have an unsettling supernatural nature. Town resident Margaret Lanterman, known as the Log Lady, reveals to the investigators that her supposedly sentient tree log saw two men with Laura on the night of her murder. Cooper then has a dream where he travels to a red room known as the Black Lodge. There he encounters a one-armed man named Mike and an evil spirit named Bob previously seen by Laura's mother, Sarah. Mike reveals himself to have been a former partner of Bob in violent and horrific murders. But after finding God, Mike cut off his own arm, which was tattooed with the phrase Fire Walk With Me, to sever his connection to Bob. Cooper also meets a dwarf, the physical embodiment of Mike's arm, and an older version of Laura Palmer, who whispers a secret message into Cooper's ear before he wakes up, failing to remember the details of the message. Hawk manages to track down the one-armed man from Cooper's dream, supposedly named Mike, but the man is actually a simple shoe salesman named Philip Gerard, who has no knowledge of the Red Room, the Black Lodge, or anything to do with Laura Palmer. Secretly, Gerard is taking medication to keep the possessing spirit of Mike from taking control of his body. When Cooper and the police question Dr. Jacoby, he confesses to having loved Laura, but professes his innocence in her death. The investigators then turn their attention to Leo Johnson and his partner in drug trafficking, Jacques Renault. Harry reveals to Cooper that he is a member of a secret society in Twin Peaks known as the Bookhouse Boys, who have long been trying to rid the town of illegal drugs. Other members of the Bookhouse Boys include Hawk, Andy, Big Ed, and his nephew James. When investigating Jacques' apartment, they discover Leo's bloody shirt that Bobby had previously planted. The investigators also realize that Jacques owns the same type of bird that caused the bite marks on Laura. As the bird begins speaking to the investigators in simple phrases like Laura, don't 
don't go there and Leo know, Leo secretly arrives and kills the bird. Wanting to impress her crush, Agent Cooper, Audrey Horn reveals details about her father's secret brothel and casino, One-Eyed Jacks, which Cooper realizes is the source of the poker chip found in Laura's body. As Audrey secretly gets a job as a prostitute at One-Eyed Jacks to gather more intel, Cooper and Big Ed also go undercover at the casino, where they discover Jacques Renault working as a dealer. The undercover Cooper gets Jacques to confess to sleeping with both Laura Palmer and Renette Pulaski on the night of Laura's death, leading to the police arriving to arrest him. As Jacques resists arrest, Andy is forced to shoot him to subdue him. In the hospital, Jacques claims to have been attacked and knocked out by Leo the night of Laura's death, using a shirt to stop his bleeding, and has no further knowledge of her murder. Elsewhere, James and Donna decide to embark on their own investigation into Laura's death. Despite being Laura's best friend and secret lover, the two quickly give in to their feelings for each other and begin to date. This is complicated when Laura's cousin Maddie, an identical look-alike in every way other than hair, arrives in Twin Peaks to attend Laura's funeral. James develops complicated romantic feelings for Maddie as she joins the unofficial investigation. The group discovers Laura's closeness to Dr. Jacoby and theorize that he might be her killer. Laura had created a series of personal recordings for Jacoby, and the trio concoct a plan to steal them in the hopes that they may contain evidence pointing toward her killer. Maddie poses as Laura to distract Jacoby, while Donna and James break into the psychiatrist's office to steal the tapes. During the distraction, Jacoby is attacked by a mysterious stranger, resulting in the psychiatrist having a heart attack and needing to be hospitalized. As Donna, James, and Maddie listen to the recordings, they hear Laura disparaging James and confessing her attraction to Leo Johnson, despite knowing he is violent and potentially deadly. Meanwhile, Ben Horn continues his scheme to steal the Packard sawmill so he can use the land to build his planned Ghostwood development project. Ben hires Leo Johnson to burn down the mill with Catherine inside it, allowing him to be the beneficiary of her life insurance policy. And then, to cover his bases, Ben hires Hank Jennings to murder Leo in an effort to tie up all of his loose ends. As Leo goes to destroy the mill, he brings along his wife Shelly against her will. Leo has uncovered Shelly's affair with Bobby, and in retaliation, he ties her up inside the mill and plants a bomb, planning to kill her in the mill's destruction. As Leo leaves to find and kill Bobby, Catherine arrives at the mill and frees Shelly from her binds, just as the bomb goes off. As Leo attempts to murder Bobby, Hank arrives, shooting Leo on Ben's orders before fleeing the scene. As season one comes to a close, Leland Palmer, learning that Jacques Renault is the prime suspect in Laura's death and is currently in police custody at the hospital, secretly arrives and murders his daughter's supposed killer. Elsewhere, while staying at the Great Northern, Agent Cooper recounts all of the recent events on his trusty tape recorder for his secretary and confidant, Diane. But as Cooper goes to answer a knock at his door, he is shot three times by a mystery assailant. In Season 2 of Twin Peaks, as Cooper bleeds out, he has visions of a mysterious giant that reveals three clues about Laura's killer. There is a man in a smiling bag, the owls are not what they seem, and without chemicals, he points. As Cooper is taken to the hospital to have his wounds tended to, he learns of Jacques Renault's death, and his body bag is hanging as if in a smile, confirming the giant to be real. Cooper quickly recovers from his wounds and deduces that their current prime suspect, Leo Johnson, could not be the killer, as he was serving a prison sentence at the time of Teresa Banks' murder. And so, Cooper and the Sheriff's Department are back at square one, and must uncover a mysterious third figure that was with Leo and Jacques Renault the night of Laura Palmer's murder. Jacques' brother Jean Renault, a major drug trafficker, arrives in Twin Peaks to avenge his brother's death. Blaming Cooper for Jacques' demise, Jean kidnaps Audrey and holds her for ransom, secretly using her as bait to kill the unsuspecting FBI agent. Ben agrees to pay the ransom, but before Cooper goes to deliver it to Jean, he realizes it's a trap to lead him to his death. 
And so Cooper and Harry instead perform an unsanctioned covert raid on One-Eyed Jax, saving Audrey but failing to capture Jean. Elsewhere, Leo Johnson also survives his gunshot wounds but is left in a vegetative state. Bobby and Shelley scheme to be Leo's primary caretaker so that they can live together and receive his disability checks. Unfortunately, the payments are much lower than anticipated, forcing Shelley to continue working at the Double R while Bobby gets a job working for Ben Horn. Despite managing to save Shelley from the sawmill fire, Catherine Martell is presumed dead. Fearing that she will be blamed for starting the fire that killed her rival, Josie flees Twin Peaks. With both Josie and Catherine out of the way, Ben Horn is able to move forward with his Ghostwood development project. When a Japanese businessman named Mr. Tojimura offers $5 million for the project, Ben and his business partner brother Jerry excitedly celebrate their financial windfall. And as for Ben's lawyer Leland, the grieving father of Laura Palmer has completely changed following his murder of Jacques Renault. His hair has turned a bright white, and his grief has been replaced by an unnerving glee. Meanwhile, Donna, James, and Maddie continue their own investigation into Laura's death, all the while James is further torn by his romantic feelings for both girls. When Donna takes over Laura's job with Meals on Wheels, she meets an old woman named Mrs. Tremont, who lives with her grandson, Pierre. Despite appearing as patrons of Meals on Wheels, the duo are actually more spirits from the Black Lodge, guiding figures toward their own purposes. Mrs. Tremont complains to Donna that she was delivered cream corn, despite specifically asking to not receive any. In truth, creamed corn resembles Garmin Bosia, a physical manifestation of pain and sorrow that was the form of sustenance for certain spirits from the Black Lodge, like the arm. The Tremens had previously lived next to Teresa Banks in Carl Rod's trailer park, going by the names the Chalfonts. They had gifted Laura a picture of a doorway that helped Laura enter and explore the Black Lodge prior to her death, and now they directed Donna to another of Laura's patrons, an agoraphobic man named Harold Smith, who had befriended Laura before her death. Laura had secretly given Harold her diary to keep safe, but he refuses to hand it over to Donna to search for clues. And so Donna tries to seduce Harold to distract him while Maddie attempts to steal the diary. Harold catches the girls red-handed, but James arrives and saves his friends before Harold can retaliate. Donna then finally alerts the police to the whereabouts of Laura's secret diary, but when Hawk arrives at Harold's house, he finds the betrayed and heartbroken man is already dead. As Donna continues her search for the diary, she uncovers a missing page that reveals that Laura had similar dreams of the red-roomed Black Lodge that Cooper had previously experienced. Elsewhere, Bobby's father, Major Garland Briggs, receives a mysterious message at work to deliver to Agent Cooper. Briggs previously worked with the disbanded Project Blue Book and had been stationed in Twin Peaks to monitor deep space probes and anything supernatural or otherworldly in town. Briggs' message he delivers to Cooper is the owls are not what they seem, further proving the giant's legitimacy. After being shown a picture of Bob, Leland identifies him as a man he knew as Robert a neighbor at his family's childhood vacation home. Ronette Pulaski then finally wakes up from her coma and identifies Bob as her attacker. When Cooper discovers a letter B under Ronette's fingernail, he determines that Bob had been spelling out Robertson with all of his victims. Harry then discovers that Leland killed Jacques and arrests him, though Leland is let out on bail. When Laura's missing diary pages are found, the investigators discover that she has detailed years of abuse by Bob and that she would soon tell the world about Ben Horn. When Audrey learns that her father had an affair with Laura before her death, Cooper and Harry have enough evidence to arrest Ben as Laura's murderer. As Ben is arrested, Maddie prepares to leave Twin Peaks and return home, only to be confronted by Leland, revealing himself to be the one possessed by Bob before murdering Maddie. With the evidence against Ben being extremely incriminating, the business tycoon is visited in jail by Mr. Tojimura, who reveals themselves to actually be an alive and well Catherine in disguise. Catherine agrees to corroborate Ben's alibi that he was with her the night of Laura's murder in exchange for Ben signing over the Ghostwood property. Cooper then questions Philip Gerard, who without his medication is taken over by Mike. Mike urges Cooper to remember his dream, fulfilling the giant's prophecy without chemicals he points. Cooper then finally remembers what Laura whispered to him in the Black Lodge, My father killed me. 
Laura Palmer had suffered years of abuse at the hands of the evil spirit Bob, posing as her father Leland, and had turned to sex and drugs to cope with the trauma. She then began dreaming of the red-roomed Black Lodge, where she encountered the arm and Dale Cooper, whispering in the unfamiliar agent's ear the truth about her father. The night of her death, Laura, Ronette, Leo, and Jacques all took drugs and had sex, before Jacques took things too far and tied up Laura and assaulted her. Leland then arrived, knocking out the unaware Jacques while Leo fled. Leland then took Laura and Ronette to the abandoned train car, where Bob reveals that his true plan is to make Laura his new host, as she had earned the love and devotion of so many residents in Twin Peaks. Mike then arrived at the train car, rescuing Ronette and giving Laura the jade ring worn by Teresa Banks, which would stop Bob from possessing her. Furious he could no longer possess Laura, Bob then murdered her. In the present, Cooper and Harry arrest Leland, and the spirit of Bob speaks through him, confessing to the murders of Laura, Maddie, and Teresa Banks. The spirit of Bob then kills Leland and escapes his body. Leland is comforted by Cooper as he dies, for the first time realizing the depths of the horrors that he has committed under the control of Bob. With the case of Laura Palmer solved, FBI agent Dale Cooper prepares to leave Twin Peaks to work on his next case. Unfortunately, the FBI suspends him from the Bureau due to the unsanctioned raid on One-Eyed Jax. Having proved himself a valuable protector and friend of the people of Twin Peaks, Sheriff Harry S. Truman decides to deputize Cooper to keep him employed during his suspension. And on his first official case with the Sheriff's Department, Cooper brings in his old friend from the DEA, Denise, to help finally bring down Jean Renault once and for all. Elsewhere, James blames himself for the deaths of Laura and Maddie, and leaves town on a self-imposed exile. While away, he begins an affair with an older married woman named Evelyn, who is secretly only using him in a scheme to frame him for the murder of her husband, so she can inherit his money and run off with her true lover, Malcolm. Evelyn begins to truly fall in love with James, and when Malcolm tries to murder him, Evelyn intervenes and kills Malcolm instead. James is then found by Donna, who urges him to return to Twin Peaks. Not yet ready to face the ghost of his hometown, James bids Donna farewell, but promises to one day return. Meanwhile, Donna discovers that her mother had once had an affair with Ben Horn, who confesses that he may in fact be her biological father. And in other complicated paternity revelations, Lucy discovers that she is pregnant, but is unsure if the father is the lovable goof Deputy Andy, or the pretentious fashion salesman Dick Tremaine. Andy and Dick develop a rivalry with each other, both trying to prove that they would make the better suitor for Lucy and father of her unborn child. In their battle of one-upsmanship, they both begin mentoring an orphan boy named Nikki. But when strange and dangerous accidents begin occurring in Nikki's presence, the men begin to fear that the child is the literal personification of Satan. Lucy proves the accidents to just be random happenstance, and that Nikki truly is just a child with a lifetime of misfortune, scolding both Andy and Dick for their insane conspiracy and poor treatment of the boy. Ultimately, Lucy realizes her love for Andy and chooses him to be the father of her child. Meanwhile, Ben Horn's life and business are left in shambles. Catherine has stolen the Ghostwood project from him, and his arrest for Laura Palmer's murder has dampened his business and public approval, despite being found innocent. At his lowest point, Ben mentally breaks and begins to believe that he is General Robert E. Lee fighting in the American Civil War. Worried for Ben's mental state, Audrey and Jerry enlist the help of Dr. Jacoby to snap Ben back to reality. Reinvigorated, Ben begins plotting his revenge against Catherine, spearheading a campaign to save the near-extinct Pine Weasel, in a thinly-veiled plot to halt the Ghostwood development project. Elsewhere, Nadine finally wakes from her coma, but her mind has reverted back to that of a high schooler. She begins attending classes, joins the school's wrestling team, and develops a relationship with Bobby's jock friend Mike. With Nadine living her own independent life, Ed and Norma finally begin to pursue their romantic feelings for each other, with plans to both leave their spouses to be together. When Hank discovers the affair, he attacks Ed, only for Nadine to arrive and use her superhuman strength to defeat Hank, and allow the police to arrest him for his various parole violations. 
Josie Packard then returns to Twin Peaks, revealing to her lover Harry the serious danger that she is in. Josie had been coerced by her late husband Andrew's business rival Thomas Eckert to orchestrate Andrew's death and stage it as an accident. And now Thomas wants Josie to return to him in Hong Kong. Josie wants to be finished with a life of lies and deceit and refuses Eckert's demands, forcing Thomas to send his associate Jonathan to collect Josie and forcibly take her. Josie then fought back against Jonathan and killed him. When the police discover Jonathan's body, forensic reports from Albert reveal that not only did Josie shoot him, but she was also the mysterious shooter of Cooper, fearing he would discover her involvement with Eckert's deadly plot. Secretly, Andrew Packard is alive and well, working with his sister Catherine to use Josie as bait to draw Eckert to Twin Peaks, where they can take him down for good. As Cooper and Harry race to find Josie, she meets with Eckhart and the two fight, resulting in Josie killing her tormentor. Harry then begs Josie to put her gun down, but instead she begs her lover for forgiveness before falling dead, her extreme pain and sorrow trapping her soul in the supernatural ghostwood dresser of the Great Northern Hotel. As Cooper remains in Twin Peaks, he befriends Bobby's father, Major Garland Briggs, who mysteriously vanishes and reappears, recounting his experience in the White Lodge. The mythological place is the counterpart to the evil Black Lodge. Instead of connected to and feeding off pain and sorrow, it's a place of great goodness and only accessible through a strong love. After returning from the White Lodge, Briggs is marked with a strange series of scars, which the Log Lady reveals she also received after disappearing in the Ghostwood Forest as a child. Meanwhile, Cooper is reinstated to the FBI and learns from Albert and Gordon Cole that his insane former FBI partner Wyndham Earl has escaped a mental institution. Years ago, Earl had been a part of Project Blue Book, but was kicked out for his obsessive nature. He then helped Gordon Cole and Philip Jeffries create the Blue Rose Task Force for the FBI, secretly trying to learn more about the mysterious and supernatural Black Lodge. After being partnered up with the young Agent Dale Cooper, the duo began to bond over their shared love of chess. But as Earl's behavior grew increasingly erratic, his wife Caroline sought comfort and Cooper, and the two had an affair. Earl then attacked the lovers, seriously injuring Cooper and killing Caroline, prompting Earl to be institutionalized. Now, Wyndham Earl has escaped and arrived in Twin Peaks, killing residents as part of an elaborate real-life chess game to taunt Cooper. As Leo Johnson begins to come out of his vegetative state, Earl recruits him as an accomplice. Upon realizing that Earl's chess game has deadly consequences for his friends in Twin Peaks, Cooper recruits recruits chess expert Pete Martell to help him strategize a way to stalemate with Earl and prevent any further murders. As Cooper and Pete attempt to defeat Earl at the chess game, the mentally unwell killer secretly attempts to find a way to access the Black Lodge and harness its power for himself. But he doesn't want to venture into the alternate world on his own, using disguises to trick Shelley, Audrey, and Donna into joining the Miss Twin Peaks contest, where whoever is crowned the winner would become Wyndham Earl's unwitting queen. Earl kidnaps his former Blue Book colleague Major Briggs and forces him to reveal how to find and enter the Black Lodge. As Leo continues to gain back more of his consciousness, he realizes the danger that Earl poses to Shelley and puts his own life in danger to save Briggs, in the hopes that he can in turn save Shelley. In the midst of his battle against Wyndham Earl, Cooper meets and falls in love with Norma's sister Annie. As Annie, Shelley, Audrey, Donna, Lucy, and Nadine all compete in the Miss Twin Peaks contest, Annie wins, only for Earl to arrive attack the crowd, and kidnap his new queen. In the chaos, Nadine is struck in the head, reverting her back to her adult mind, leading her to break up with Mike and return to Ed, who is once again forced to part with Norma. Catherine, Andrew, and Pete then discover the key to a safety deposit box owned by the late Thomas Eckert. When Pete and Andrew arrive at the bank to uncover the box's contents, they discover Audrey has chained herself to the door. In protest of the bank's involvement with the Ghostwood Development Project. As Pete and Andrew open the box, they discover it was actually a posthumous trap from Eckert as a bomb goes off, blowing up the bank, killing Pete and Andrew, and leaving Audrey in a coma. 
Wyndham Merle then takes Annie to the Ghostwood Forest, using her immense fear as the key to open the door to the Black Lodge. Cooper follows the pair into the lodge, forcing his loyal friend Harry to stay behind. As Cooper searches the Black Lodge for Annie, he encounters the many spirits from his dreams, including the Arm, the Giant, and Laura Palmer herself, who tells Cooper she will see him again in 25 years. When Cooper finally finds Annie, Earl tells him that he will only let her go if Cooper sacrifices his own soul in her place. Although Cooper agrees, Bob appears and kills Earl as punishment for his attempts at harnessing the Lodge's power for himself. As Season 2 of Twin Peaks comes to a close, Cooper and Annie escape the Lodge and are rescued by Harry. As Annie is hospitalized, her mind caught between the real world and the Black Lodge, Cooper returns to his room at the Great Northern Hotel, where it is revealed that he is secretly an evil doppelganger created by Bob, and the real Dale Cooper is still trapped inside the Black Lodge. In Season 3 of Twin Peaks, known as The Return, 25 years have passed and the real Dale Cooper is still trapped within the Black Lodge, while his evil doppelganger known as Mr. C violently roams the Earth. Mr. C left Twin Peaks shortly after arriving, confusing the real Cooper's friends, and has since been living out his violent fantasies with a group of criminal accomplices. In the real Cooper's absence, many things have changed for his friends in Twin Peaks. While still in a coma from the bank explosion, Audrey Horn was assaulted by Mr. C, resulting in her giving birth to a son, Richard. Audrey's life took many tragic turns following her waking from her coma, eventually leading her to retreat to a fantasy world in her own mind. Richard Horn is violent and disturbed, terrorizing his family and leaving the reformed Ben Horn to pick up the pieces. Richard works alongside the shady deputy Chad to smuggle drugs into Twin Peaks, but after running over and killing a young boy, Richard flees his hometown for good, while Chad is caught by his fellow police officers and imprisoned in the town's jail. Dr. Jacoby has had his medical license revoked following his handling of Laura Palmer case and now lives off the grid broadcasting a daily self-empowerment conspiracy theory led internet show. He radicalizes his loyal followers which includes Nadine Hurley inspiring her to achieve self-actualization. In turn she ends her loveless marriage to Ed who is able to finally and fully pursue his relationship with his lifelong love Norma. James Hurley has finally returned to Twin Peaks, and though he failed to rekindle his relationship with Donna, he remains a hopeless romantic. James now works as a security guard for the Great Northern Hotel, where he befriends his colleague Freddie Sykes. Freddie explains to James he was visited by the giant, who identified himself as the fireman, who told Freddie to purchase a green glove that he can never take off, but in return he is awarded superhuman strength. The fireman then instructed Freddie to travel to Twin Peaks to await his destiny. After a night of drinking together at the roadhouse, James runs into his new crush Renee, but is then attacked by Renee's husband. Freddy intervenes to save James, using his super strength to defeat Renee's husband, but this results in both James and Freddy being arrested. Following the death of Leo Johnson, Bobby Briggs and Shelley got married and had a daughter Becky, but eventually the two grew apart and got divorced. The now adult Becky has inherited her mother's love of bad boys and has gotten married to the abusive junkie Steven. While they both live in Carl Rod's relocated trailer park, Bobby has turned his life around and joined the Twin Peaks Sheriff's Department, where he works as a loyal and heroic deputy. Sheriff Harry S. Truman has recently been diagnosed with cancer and retires to seek treatment, leading to his brother Frank arriving in town to serve as the interim sheriff. Deputy Andy and Lucy have gotten married and happily raised their now adult son Wally. Hawk has been promoted to deputy chief and dutifully serves as Frank's right-hand man, but the sudden disappearance of Cooper all those years ago has nagged at him ever since. One night, Hawk receives a call from the log lady, relaying a message from her log that leads to Hawk uncovering a secret hidden page from Laura's diary. The diary entry reveals that before her death, Laura was visited by Annie from her future time in the Black Lodge. Annie warned Laura that she would soon die and that the good Dale is in the lodge but can't leave. Hawk takes this revelation to his friends, who are all inspired to finally uncover the truth behind Dale Cooper's disappearance. 
For the past 25 years, Dale Cooper has been trapped in the Black Lodge, a place outside of time and space where souls go to be judged. The Black Lodge and its spiritual inhabitants were actually created in 1945, when the United States detonated the first ever atomic bomb during J. Robert Oppenheimer's Trinity Test. The immense pain and suffering caused by this bomb birthed the entity Jalde, or Judy. Judy in turn birthed her evil spirits, including the villainous woodsman figures, and the devilish Bob. In another realm on a purple sea, the benevolent firemen discovered the creation of this evil and in turn inspired the birth of Laura Palmer, in the hopes that she will be the key to defeating Judy and the Black Lodge. Now, 25 years after first becoming trapped in the Lodge, Laura Palmer returns to Dale Cooper, upholding her promise of seeing him again in 25 years. Cooper's soul has been judged, and it is now time to return home. Mike then arrives and leads Cooper to the evolved form of the arm, who explains that for Cooper to return to Earth, his evil doppelganger must return to the Black Lodge. As Cooper journeys through different realms to return home, he encounters a mute eyeless woman named Nido, and a stranger resembling Renette Pulaski, who helps him activate a device that sends him back to Earth. As Cooper's soul attempts to escape the Black Lodge, the villainous Mr. C begins to be pulled back to take his place. Unfortunately, Mr. C has planned for this and long ago created a Tulpa, a supernatural duplicate of the original Cooper. This Tulpa has been living obliviously as the family man insurance agent Dougie Jones. Dougie is pulled into the Black Lodge and destroyed, while Cooper takes his place on Earth. His mind damaged in the transition and leaving him with no memories, a childlike understanding of the world, and and a limited speech pattern. The oblivious Cooper is then pulled into living the life of Dougie Jones, returning to his wife Janie E and young son Sonny Jim, while Mr. C successfully remains on Earth but is arrested for his violent crimes. As Dougie, the aloof Cooper stumbles his way into massive winnings at a Las Vegas casino, confusing and infuriating the casino's owners Rodney and Bradley Mitchum. Unbeknownst to Cooper, this is a massive help to the Jones family, as Dougie had fallen into a large gambling debt with dangerous enemies that wanted to see him dead but are now made whole. Unfortunately, Dougie's past debtors aren't the only ones that want Cooper dead, as Mr. C realizes that one of them must die for the other to remain on Earth. Mr. C tasks powerful middleman Duncan Todd to handle his Cooper problem, and in turn, Duncan hires the assassin Ike the Spike to kill the so-called Dougie Jones. When Ike attacks Cooper, his FBI training takes over, allowing him to disarm Ike and save both himself and Janie E. Dougie Jones is lauded as a hero in the press, and Janie E. falls deeper in love with her blank slate of a husband. While working as an insurance agent, the near-catatonic Cooper is aided by benevolent spirits like Mike and the Fireman to impress his boss Bushnell Mullins, uncovering an insurance fraud scheme being run by fellow agent Anthony Sinclair and a group of corrupt cops. With his history of deceit uncovered, the desperate Anthony is coerced by Duncan to have Dougie killed. Not wanting to commit murder himself, Anthony goes to the corrupt Mitchum brothers to inform them that Dougie Jones was the agent responsible for denying their insurance claim on a burned down casino that lost them $30 million. As the Mitchums prepare to meet with Dougie and kill him, the oblivious Cooper discovers the error in the Mitchums claim and shows up to the meeting with a check for $30 million and a delicious cherry pie. The Mitchum brothers are ecstatic by this twist of fate and become Dougie's biggest champions and allies gifting him and his family with a wealth of presents and offering up their extensive resources any time they are needed. Still needing Dougie dead, Duncan then forces Anthony to kill him himself. But as Anthony attempts to poison Dougie, the charms of the oblivious Cooper completely break the corrupt insurance agent, inspiring Anthony to confess to his crimes and turn himself over to the police. With all of the original Dougie Jones's problems now resolved, Cooper is seemingly free 
to live an oblivious idyllic life with his new family. But after hearing the name of his old friend Gordon Cole on TV, Cooper is compelled to electrocute himself, sending him into a coma. With Mr. C in prison, the now deputy director of the FBI, Gordon Cole, is alerted to the supposed Cooper's capture. With Albert and new Blue Rose Task Force recruit Tammy Preston by his side, Gordon goes to find out where his old friend and colleague has been all of these years. Mr. C, still posing as Cooper, claims to have been working on a classified case with the long-missing Philip Jeffries. Both Gordon and Albert are disturbed by Mr. C's behavior and seek out the help of Cooper's former secretary and friend Diane to speak with their imprisoned colleague and give her own thoughts. Upon speaking with Mr. C, Diane is adamant that he is not the Cooper they all once knew as he lacks Cooper's heart. Sheriff Frank Truman then calls Gordon to reveal what Hawk had discovered in Laura's diary, that there are two Coopers, and the real one has been trapped in the Black Lodge. Before the group can uncover the full truth about Mr. C, they are called to a neighboring city where the decapitated body of Major Garland Briggs has been discovered, alongside the severed head of a young librarian named Ruth. Major Briggs had been presumed dead since shortly after Cooper's disappearance 25 years prior, but his recently discovered body appears to have barely aged a day. The local police then arrest school principal Bill Hastings after his fingerprints are found all over the Briggs and Ruth crime scene. Hastings admits to having had an affair with Ruth before her death and that they had both become interested in exploring supernatural realms like the Lodges or the Purple Sea, which they knew only as the Zone. When Hastings and Ruth entered the Zone, they found Briggs, alive and well, who was on his own secret mission to help Cooper escape from the Black Lodge and defeat Mr. C, leaving clues all the while in the hopes his friends will one day discover them. When Mr. C discovered this, he killed killed Briggs and Ruth, stole their coordinates to the zone, and framed Hastings. Hastings takes Gordon and the others to the entrance of the zone, where they discover Ruth's body, only for Hastings to be killed by a villainous woodsman. As the autopsy is completed on Major Briggs, the team discovers a ring inside his stomach belonging to Dougie Jones, who Diane recognizes as the husband of her half-sister, Janie E. Feeling that this mysterious Dougie Jones is connected to Briggs' mission to bring back Cooper, Gordon becomes determined to find him. His plan is nearly thwarted when Diane reveals herself to be a tulpa, created by Mr. C to do his bidding. As this evil Diane attempts to kill Gordon and his Blue Rose task force, the real Diane manages to break through long enough to reveal that her real body is in Twin Peaks before Albert and Tammy successfully kill the tulpa. Back in Twin Peaks, Bobby helps Frank, Hawk, and Andy decipher a map that his father, Major Briggs, had left for him decades prior to help them rescue Cooper. The group use Briggs's map to enter the Ghostwood Forest, where they find a confused Nido has been transported to Earth, while Andy is pulled to the fireman's home on the Purple Sea. The fireman reveals to Andy the history of Judy and the Black Lodge, and warns him of what must be done to save his loved ones and defeat the ultimate evil. Andy is then returned to the forest, where he helps his friends bring Nido to safety at the sheriff's department. Meanwhile, Mr. C blackmails the prison warden to ensure his release alongside fellow inmate Ray Monroe. Mr. C is on a mission to find and reunite with Judy, the very essence of evil that originally birthed him. But to find Judy, he would need to acquire her coordinates. Mr. C believes that Ray has the coordinates, as he has been in contact with the long-missing Philip Jeffries. Secretly, Ray is an informant for both Jeffries and and Gordon Cole, and he has been tasked with killing Mr. C and placing the Jade Ring on his finger, as it sends the wearer's soul to the Black Lodge after their death. Mr. C is aided by the Woodsman to thwart Ray's plan, and in turn, Mr. C kills Ray and sends him to the Black Lodge instead. On Mr. C's trek, he eventually crosses paths with his son, Richard Horn. Richard joins Mr. C on his journey to the coordinates, and upon reaching their destination, Mr. C encourages his son to test the site without him. As Richard stands in the given coordinates, he is electrocuted and disintegrates, proving the location to actually be a trap intended to kill Mr. C. Showing no remorse for his son, Dale Cooper's evil doppelganger continues his journey to find Judy, this time heading to the Ghostwood Forest surrounding Twin Peaks, where he intends to travel to the Purple Sea to confront the firemen. Dale Cooper finally wakes from his coma, his mind fully restored, and having gained the 
knowledge of everything he must do to defeat Bob and Judy in a final battle. But first, Cooper instructs Mike to make a new tulpa of Dougie to reunite with Janie E and Sonny Jim. Cooper then relays a message to his old friend Gordon to meet him in Twin Peaks and tasks the Mitchum brothers to fly him to his old home to reunite with his friends and stop the Bob-possessed Mr. C once and for all. In the Purple Sea, Mr. C is trapped by the firemen. The benevolent giant knows that the real Judy is actually inhabiting the body of Laura Palmer's grieving mother, Sarah. Having been abused as a child, repressed the abuse of her own daughter at the hands of her husband, lost Laura in a brutal murder, and now lived a sad, lonely life in solitude for the past two decades, Sarah Palmer's pain and sorrow are the perfect host for the evil Judy to feed on. Instead of sending Mr. C to reunite with the Judy possessed Sarah. The fireman tricks Cooper's evil doppelganger and sends him to the Twin Peaks Sheriff's Department. As Mr. C enters the office, Sheriff Frank receives a call from the real Cooper, warning him of his evil doppelganger's presence. As Frank and Mr. C draw their guns on each other, it is Lucy who fires first, seemingly killing Mr. C. Down in the jail cells, the corrupt Chad escapes, planning to enact his own revenge on his former deputy colleagues. The powerful Freddy knocks out Chad with his green gloved hand, while Andy releases everyone to come upstairs, knowing it will fulfill the vision given to him by the fireman. As everyone convenes around the body of Mr. C, the real Dale Cooper finally arrives to reunite with his old friends. An orb containing the spirit of Bob escapes Mr. C's body and attacks Cooper, but Freddy intervenes, using his gloved hand to smash the orb and destroy Bob once and for all. As Cooper embraces his old friends, Gordon, Albert, and Tammy arrive to join in on the celebration. When Cooper notices Nido, the two touch, transforming the eyeless stranger into the real Diane, who had been trapped in this body by Mr. C years prior. Unfortunately, there is still work for Cooper to complete, so he asks Frank to give Harry his best wishes, says goodbye to his friends, and then follows Mike to the otherworldly location of the hiding Philip Jeffries, whose spirit now resides in a large steam kettle. Cooper asks Jeffries to send him to the location where he can find Judy and defeat her, which just so happens to be Twin Peaks on February 23rd, 1989, the day Laura Palmer was murdered. Cooper watches as Laura leaves James to meet with Leo Johnson, Jacques Renault, and Renette Pulaski, but Cooper intervenes. Laura recognizes Cooper as the man from her dreams of the Red Room and agrees to accompany him, ensuring that her murder never occurs. But before Cooper can celebrate this new victory, Laura is mysteriously pulled away from him and he is transported back to the Black Lodge. In the same scenario he found himself in at the start of the season, restarting a loop of returning to Earth to defeat Judy. But this time Cooper retains his memories and his mind and is accompanied by Diane. Back on Earth in the present, Cooper and Diane travel together in the hopes of finding an alive and well adult Laura Palmer. On their journey, the pair pass through a portal, and on the other side, Diane departs Cooper, referring to herself as a woman named Linda, and Cooper as a man named Richard. Confused, Cooper continues on his journey and eventually finds Laura Palmer in Odessa, Texas, identifying herself as a woman named Carrie Page. Wanting to wake Laura up to remember her past, Cooper convinces the woman to accompany him to her so-called home in Twin Peaks. Upon their arrival at the Palmer's family home, Cooper is greeted by a stranger going by the name Mrs. Trimmond. She claims to have owned this home for many years, having bought it from a woman named Mrs. Chalfont, and has no knowledge of anyone by the name of Laura Palmer or her parents Sarah and Leland. As Cooper backs away, confused by this revelation, Carrie Page hears Sarah screaming for her daughter the night she disappeared. The memories of Laura Palmer's tragic life come flooding back to her, and as the series comes to a close, she lets out a pained, horrified scream as darkness envelops her. 
Ultimately, the ending of Twin Peaks is left open to the viewer's interpretation. The optimistic reading is that Laura regaining her memories led to an overabundance of pain and sorrow that overwhelmed Judy and destroyed her for good. But the other reading is a much more tragic one. The headstrong and optimistic Dale Cooper may have been a hero in his involvement with defeating Bob, but not even a heroic figure as well-meaning as Cooper can defeat the totality of pain and sorrow in the real world. And through his naive determination, Cooper has misunderstood his role in the fireman's plan to defeat Judy. Instead of saving Laura Palmer, he has forced her to return to the site of a lifetime of abuse and trapped them both in an infinite loop of suffering. For Dale Cooper, it's a lesson learned the hard way that trauma can feel like an impossible cycle to break. And of course, there's an even darker and more cynical option, that Bob remains inside this version of Laura Palmer, and the reunion of the evil spirit with his mother Judy may in fact be an evil powerful enough to destroy the entire world.